I, I think personally, when I first came to Congress, you were one of the first individuals to reach out to me and to give advice and encouragement. <clears throat> and to this day, every time I see you, you do that. And you will never know how much that means. And I just want to publicly state that uh, Johnny Isaacson, Senator Isaacson, is a hero for people all across this country. Uh, your brilliant mind and your leadership will always be here. And we say thank you from the bottom of our heart. And may God bless you and your family as you go into this next chapter. Thank you. I yield back. During his tenure, Senator Isaacson has been a bellwether for many in our delegation, both as a member of this body and as a United States Senator. If I've heard it once, I've heard it a thousand times. Where's Johnny on this? What does Johnny think about this? Have you spoken to Johnny on this? He has offered counsel that's, that's been learned through his 40 years of public service that is invaluable to me and many of us in the Georgia delegation and throughout this nation. Senator Ickerson is a special man. He is a good man. I want to thank him for his years of service in the Georgia State Legislature. A man who has strong belief, but also willing to work with others to get things done. Very quickly, members of the House and Senate discover how true this was. The Senator does not make a lot of a noise, but he has the ability and the power the capacity to speak to power. We always find a way to get along and to do the good work that people deserve. And time and time again, he stood with us. He worked with us to uplift African American in the state of Georgia to recognize individuals like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Jackie Robinson, lady of Georgia. He did not just talk the talk, he literally walked the walk. You have been very good to the people of the state of Georgia, and I'm lucky enough and just blessed really to, to call you a friend and a brother. Thank you so much. Madam Speaker, it is almost difficult to yield back the time when I speak of this good and great leader from the state of Georgia. Thank you, brother, for your service. I will come over and meet you, brother. Madam Speaker, I wish all of America could be here to see that. Two icons from Georgia embracing. What a wonderful sight that I think is representative of the days of the past and the days to come uh, and, and how we should uh, work together. Thank you. Thank you both so much. But it was different. Instead, Johnny Isaacson, he took the stage with grace, with respect, with dignity, with vision, and with a confidence that I never expected in a person. And whether he knew it that night, at that time, he chose to impact, and he chose to inspire, and he chose to inspire me. I am honored to call Johnny my friend. We will miss him in the delegation. His loss will be felt deeply but we can all agree that he is very much deserving of a happy retirement spent with his wife, Diane, our children and grandchildren. And we wish you the best, Johnny. The poet said, isn't it strange 
how princes and kings and clowns that caper in sawdust rings and common folks like you and me are builders for eternity. Each is given a bag of tools, a shapeless mass and a set of rules, and each must make your life has flown a stumbling block or a stepping stone. The people of Georgia, the people of our nation, and indeed people all across the world are so blessed that you have used your life and your career not as a stumbling block, but as a stepping stone for a higher, better quality of life for humankind. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Bishop. And um, I want to thank Senator Isaacson as well for his service to our nation's veterans and his role as chairman of the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee. He served our military veterans faithfully for, for many, many years. I remember every time I would come to you and there would be times that I would be uh, asking a question and I would go along and, and instead you would answer, you would listen, you would answer the question and I went away feeling better just by being with you. I remember when I talked to you right after you announced this that you were going to leave a big hole in our delegation. And the first thing you said to me when I picked up the phone as you did almost every time, Doug, thank you, you're doing a great job. <laughs> Even when I knew that probably wasn't true. When you understand, though, what it takes to lift people up, you leave a mark. You leave a special mark. For those of us in politics who struggled many times over the past few years to go into groups that would call us names and not like us, even when they supposedly were on our side, <laughs> I watched what you did. You would go into those groups. You would sneak in the back after the meeting started. They would see you there. They would recognize you, and you stood and you spoke. You never backed up. You never backed down. But you made a lot of converts simply by being there. For those of us in public service, if you've showed me or showed anybody anything, is it being in the room, being a participant, listening to people and caring about them, even if you disagree with them, is the largest step we can take to make sure that we have a union that matters. So from me and my house, for a profession that we have taken on who needs role models, we stand on your shoulders. You are the giant in the room from our perspective of watching what happens and how it happens. And when I got to Washington, D.C., I knew the one thing that I wanted to do was actually pass legislation because I'd heard you say one time before, <laughs> why we come up here if we don't get anything done? Johnny, you are far beyond the policy. You are to the heart of people and it will be missed in this place. But it is alive now. And we turn to you and that vision more than anything. And of course, as you know, I still represent part of Athens and Clark County. You're a Georgia graduate. And as we sort of say around those parts, Johnny, you're a damn good dog. I yield. Thank you, Mr. Collins. I now yield to my colleague, uh, the gentle lady from Georgia, Ms. McBath. We are gathered here today to honor our colleague. It's an honor to represent Georgia's 6th District here in Congress, and it's truly an honor to hold the seat that Senator Isaacson once held. Senator Isaacson has spent decades in service to the state of Georgia and to our great nation. His legacy has left an unforgettable mark on Georgia and the United States Senate. He is known in our community for being a friendly neighbor and for being a truly good man. And I am honored to call you my friend. What I have always loved about you, Senator, is you have never been embarrassed to be a Republican. You knew what you believed. You knew why you believed it. Now, you might not like the way someone else expresses their Republican values, but you led with your heart. You can sit right beside a Democratic hero like John Lewis 
And I can't tell a difference when it comes to Southern gentility, but you'll never be embarrassed to share who you are uh, as a Republican. That's what it takes to grow from 23 uh, members in a 180 member body into the institution that Tom Graves had an opportunity uh, to serve and into the institution uh, that so many of our colleagues had a chance to serve and we talk about bipartisanship uh, as that holy grail it requires partisanship to get there and but for the example that you set we wouldn't have the Republican Party in Georgia and we wouldn't have Isaacs and values in that party your dedication to our state and our nation has truly been un unmatched and is something that I've admired throughout all my time in public service. Senator Isaacson, you're one of the greatest Georgians to ever serve and one of the only Georgian, in fact, the only Georgian to have ever served in the Georgia State House, in the Georgia State Senate, in the House of Representatives, and in the United States Senate. I got three out of four. I don't know if I'll ever make it across uh, over here, but if I do, I'm going to catch you because I, I've had the honor as well. And at each of those levels, at each of those levels that you've served, you've been successful in advancing policies for the betterment of the state of Georgia and for the United States of America. And I think that's what's so very important. Everywhere you've been, every step of the way, it's always been for the people always been for the betterment of our state and of our nation. Commitment. He's a very committed person to those things which he believes in. Civility is one of those that really is lost today. But as, you've, as many have spoken here today, he has not only reached across the aisle, but he's reached across the state to try to bring civility in, back into politics. And, and the last one, which is I think most important to me, is friendship. The mark of a statesman is all of those, but mostly friendship. I was in a, uh, another member of Congress's office recently, and, Senator, there was a, a poster. It made me laugh. There was a poster on their wall that said, if you want a friend in Washington, get a dog. Well, I don't think that member ever met Johnny Isaacson because he is a friend. Not only to me, he's a friend of Georgia. He's a friend to all of us. He's a friend of the United States. Senator, God bless you. Thank you for your service to our state. Thank you for our service to our nation. You will be missed. And I am, I am so honored to be able to say I'm a friend of a legend from Georgia. God bless you. It's quite a difference, and it shows the depths of your influence in these halls of Congress. And, of course, throughout your uh, service, you've demonstrated the two, true meaning of servant leadership by always putting the needs and priorities of Georgia first. In fact, the greatest servant leader in history said there is no greater love than to give your life for a friend, and you've given your life to a big part of it to this country, and we're thankful for it. As someone who came from the business world but had not served in public office before, I'm thankful for your leadership. Georgia has been named the, uh, the uh, best state to do business in the last seven years, and there's no con uh, coincidence that uh, you had a, a lot to do with it. You talked to us about what it meant to be a Georgian. I re remember when you left, I remember thinking two things from that moment. That's maybe the nicest person that I've ever heard from in my entire life. And secondly, I was pretty touched that someone was looking out for my future that didn't even know me. And over the years, as I watched you, begin to follow you, I saw that play out firsthand. I saw how important the state of Georgia was to you. And what made it important, the millions of Georgians that you love and care about, the ones that you don't know, the ones that you do know, the ones that are yet to come, your unwavering commitment to make our state and this nation a better place for all of us is something that can never be forgotten. You have set a standard for being a gentleman and a statesman that we should all follow. 